So this week we have a new set of tutorials uh, using Arduino board. So just check out this one. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. All these tutorials are very straightforward. You can directly follow all the instructions uh, on how to use this LCD display. You should have one in your box. So just show something like you directly programmed in Arduino board. And then display the temperature data on the LCD display. And we have a bunch of different uh, types of temperature sensors. So the first one is this little thermist. I think that's the name of it. It's a, a thermal resistor, so it changes resistance depend on uh, the temperature, and very low cost, but works amazingly great. Uh, I I use this temperature sensor for my uh, PCR machine, the thermal cycler, for the EPA grant. It works really well. So we embedded multiple uh, of these temperature sensor into the heating pad and uh, sending a feedback signal to the microcontroller. It's very reliable <clears throat> and small as well. If you have a portable device, you can think about using this thermistor. It may be difficult to find in the box since it's very small. But I have a lot. If you cannot find one, just let me know and I have hundreds of them in the drawer. <clears throat> so there's a specific equation you have to use in order to convert that uh, voltage change. Because you can use this uh, thermist to form a voltage divider, so the voltage change can uh, be calculated into the uh, temperature change. So here's a thermistor, and so you can display the temperature onto the LCD display. Okay, And here's the equation of it. Uh, just directly use it. So see how you uh, implement this equation in your C++ code in Arduino. That's how you do it. <clears throat> so here's the temperature display on the LCD, uh, LCD module. And where's the thermistor on this picture? It's right here. Second, um, DHT11, and this is a very versatile temperature sensor because it is able to sense humidity as well, humidity and the temperature. Um, so look inside of the module, you can see this is nothing but a thermistor. So it's exactly the same stuff. And in addition to the temperature sensor, it also has a, a humidity sensor, which is a, a special material inside the sensor. But however, you don't have to program the, um, to implement the equations in here. It's totally just a digital output. You see, you part it up, ground it, and then there's just one line to send the data out, including both humidity and the temperature. So you just need a library. We we'll open up your Arduino and use this simple dht.h. We use this header file. So you can directly read the data from it. I think it is from here, dht11.read. So it has temperature, humidity being sent uh, to this variable. So let's look at the data format of the DHT11 sensor. So it has humidity over here and then being separated by one byte of zeros and then the Celsius temperature and then the Fahrenheit temperature. Okay, so these are just the, uh, the digital data from the 
DATA, the data line from the sensor. Okay. You use the library and you store it in a variable and you directly send it to the serial monitor, you can see this. It's already there. It's very convenient. You just need to connect it and use the uh, sketch over here. It's going to show you this data. Okay. And make the display on your um, LCD module. And there's a third type of temperature sensor, which is from uh, analog devices. It's called TMP36. Um, I was thinking some of you guys may not have it in your box, uh, but I think I ordered uh, many of them a, a couple years ago. So if you don't have it, let me know. I, I can find one of them in the drawer for you. So this is an analog temperature sensor. This is the the um, VL is an analog voltage which reflects the temperature variation. Uh, but one thing you have to be aware of is, so maybe you, you just try to definitely read this paragraph. So make sure you are not connecting the ground to the VCC or visit to the ground like that this is, it's going to heat up the sensor really quickly and you are trying to touch it because the finger is going to burn your finger it, it's happened a lot a couple years ago just make sure you you look at the bottom view of it look at the pin out make sure v uh, vcc is connected to vcc ground is connected to ground for other devices it's not actually that critical but this one is very important so heat it up really quickly and burn a finger. Okay. Um, so there's an equation to convert it, the analog voltage, uh, analog uh, voltage into a temperature. So just directly use this equation, um, and it sh you should should be able to see the temperature display on the LCD module. The IR receiver module is a little remote controller, uh, but you still have to use a receiver. So if you don't have it in your box, um, let me know, or can, you can find it in the in the 602 lab. So this is an IR receiver and uh, a remote as well. So if you press a key, it's going to send the IR signal to the receiver, and it's going to receive it by the Arduino and show the code of that specific key on the remote. So every key has a specific code. So you can use that code to form any action uh, to the outside uh, device, which is connected to the Arduino Uno board. Okay, but you need to find out what are these code for each key. Uh, but one thing you need to know that this remote controller, which uh, has this type of layout of the keys, this doesn't work really well. Uh, very poor quality. And there's another one, which is this guy. You can see the difference between this one and this one. So this one always works. And this one doesn't. And look at the remote you have in your box, or if you don't have one, make sure you are using a remote look like this. Works way better than the other one. This is just a very simple example to, to uh, let you know how to use a remote to control um, something, right? And uh, later this semester, we are going to use this remote to control a, a robot car uh, to move it uh, forward, backward, turning left and turning right like that. Section three is about uh, Barebone at Mega 330, 320AP. Uh, because we have been using the microcontroller on the board, uh, but how can you directly just use the microcontroller itself independently from the board? Mm -hmm. These are all the necessary connections 
you need for the microcontroller. You can take it out and plug into the uh, breadboard and connect the oscillator and caps to it and program it through the board without it, which doesn't have a chip. Um, so this is the pinout of the microcontroller chip. And these are the two pins that you need to connect to the corresponding TX and RX pins of the microcontroller in order to program it. You know what I mean? So when you are programming, when you are programming the chip itself, like this, or looking at this example, you can check out the video later. But you can see that I have this microcontroller on the breadboard, not on the microcontroller board. If you look at the the microcontroller board, the chip is not there anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So it's actually very simple. I'm using this Arduino board as a USB to serial converter or programmer, and I'm programming this um, microcontroller chip on the breadboard. Why this is important? Why well, I want to do that? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, for example, we have a, have a spe specific design for a for a company or somewhere, and I, I don't definitely don't want to use uh, the whole Arduino board. Right? It has all the unnecessary uh, peripherals, the, the USB ports, and uh, I, I just don't need it. But I just need a chip on the PCB, okay? So I designed a PCB, I have the chip over there, I have the all the necessary components, like whatever here, the oscillator, the caps, and that's it. I don't need the ports like this, and I don't need the USB serial converter, and I don't need all these headers. However, after I designed a PCB, I soldered all the chips to the PCB, but I found some issues. I want to re-upload uh, some some new program to the to the chip. Oh, what should I do? Just something like this, right? So take out the the chip from the original Arduino board. Just use it as a programmer, and just make all the necessary connections to the chip on your um, application specific uh, PCB. So you can program it outside of the uh, Arduino board. Is directly from the Arduino board to your PCB. <clears throat> so in that case, you can imagine that when you are designing a PCB for, which has a microcontroller on it, for for an application, you always want to leave some of the program uh, program pins on the PCB. So always have the capability of uh, to to program it afterwards. Right. <clears throat> Interrupts, which is a very important concept in microcontroller programming. So the idea is in your Arduino uh, program, it doesn't have to be Arduino, but for other microcontrollers, it's always the same concept. You have a one loop one loop for, it's like a forever loop for all the programs. It's just running back and forth, to run all the programs in, in between the uh, the top and bottom of the loop function. And so if you want a, the sensor or the microcontroller to be able to sense something else, what, what is happening, and then have some specific uh, action from that sensor signal, you, you usually use the interrupt. How that works is like, it's always running the loop uh, but you can set up a interrupt flag. So whenever that counter, for example, I'm counting to 100 to trigger that interrupt. So whenever the loop is always running, running at here, the when the counter is up, and it's going to interrupt the whole loop and get into the interrupt service function, where it's called ISR, is interrupt service routine. It's another sub function to run that one and then come back to execute the other the rest of the uh, the programs in the in the in the loop function any applications you can think of about this technique
Let's think about the Augusta Springs, the hot tubs, uh, the temperature sensor over there. Over there. And there's a, a display of the temperature of the hot tubs. But I really don't need to sense the temperature every single millisecond. The temperature is not changing every millisecond. It's changing probably like several minutes, you know, every like two minutes. Sometimes it's not necessary to sense the temperature every millisecond and come back and do the display, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to sense it <laughs> and clear the counter and then do the display and just hold there. I'm not sensing, I'm not receiving any data from the sensor anymore, okay? Just do the display. After a while, after like five minutes, the counter is up. This counter keep counting. So you can, because it's running at 16 megahertz, right? So you know how many counts do you need for five minutes. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of counts. Uh -huh. So every five minutes, I'm going to trigger that set function, which is going to do the serial communication with the sensor. So get the data one byte or something, and then display again. And then just hold it there. Don't change it for five minutes. And next five minutes, come back, to we'll do it. Why I want to do that for, for the temperature sensing of the hot tubs. First, the temperature of the water is not changing every millisecond, right? Second, think about, since you have been working on the seven segment, seven segment display. So for example, if we are using the seven segment display, we're using four digits, okay? What's gonna happen when you are, you need a one, one loop, one loop to run the display. How that works, you, you need a one main loop to run the display. It's activating every single one very quickly and show the number, right? However, if you plug in the temperature sensing data in the main loop, you are not going to see that uh, display continuously. It won't, won't show you that steady display anymore. You know what I mean? Because it has a different delay. It's adding a different delay within the scanning of the all the digits. So that's if you are having if you have that temperature sensing code in the loop, what's happening is it's always sensing the temperature which is not necessary, and you are not seeing a very good display on the uh, four digits. So you haven't done that yet, so probably couldn't imagine why it works in that way. So that's why it's better to just uh, grab one number, use the interrupt, get one number, show it, and don't change it. And after five minutes, you just need a one second to refresh it to update the temperature. So when people are looking at the temperature being mounted somewhere, it's not always being updated. So you are always, for 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a stable display. But only during one second after every five, five minutes, it's updating it, which is fine, right? Instead of updating the temperature data every second. Um, I'm gonna show you that, how that looks um, after this one, after I, Introducing everything here. <clears throat> so these are the, the settings you have to do when, when you are working with the <laughs> interrupts. So these are just the registers. Mm -hmm. At the very beginning, it's very confusing. So why shifting that bit? Uh, to the left by, I mean, whatever. So this is confusing because the purpose of this one is just to set to set this bit to one. And why this works for that purpose. So usually, um, you know, how, how to set up, how to set up a, a bit in a register. This is an eight bit register. The Arduino, Arduino chip is an 8-bit computer system, so all the registers are 8-bits. And so if you want to activate a function of something, you need to set 
uh, one of the bits in the A bit register to one, who turns on function on. Right? Just keep in mind, this is a, a very common technique when you are programming a, a microcontroller. It doesn't have to be Arduino, the PIX and uh, ST32s, all the working the same way. So this is a timer counter control register. Um, you know, it's one of the registers being used for the uh, for the interrupts. So I need. So right now, I want to turn this bit on. How to do that? So by looking at this one, I'll show you that in uh, in all day, when people are working with the pick. So these are very powerful microcontrollers. How to set this bit to one means most of you know the rest of the uh, other microphones. Usually, they, what they do is C, 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 R, and you know, how many? Like an ID, C, 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 R, one, C, stop. This one, so because this is a foreign register, a bit register, right? And you're going to stop. WTM, no. When you go uh, add that to this bit and just assign the one to it, you can turn on that bit. If you want to turn those, just assign a zero to it later. That's how you do it in, in other microphones. Like in, in the future, you may even have to work with other types of microphones. So, this is the usual how you do it. The E or Zero is like um, more confusing. All that works. If you want to set up, and make this bit one, and a one in this bit in this register. So this is how we do it. Why this one? So that's a register, right? Okay. That's the one bit single bit. And by doing this, you can set this single bit as one in a eight-bit register, but not other bits. Right? This is that bit. All that works. So what is one in the eight-bit uh, under this? So what is this one? That's just a name on that bit. However, in Arduino, the name, the name of that bit in the register is actually a number, it's a location. So this is number three. This is number three. See the number three here? So the name of the register, the name of the bit is number three. This is actually moving one, so this is one, to the left by how many bits? The left is shifting this one by three times, right? One, two, three, okay? So it becomes this, even four. And this is being assigned to this register, let's see, that, that one is being uh, set to one. All right, so this number, so this number is being assigned, the eight bit number is being assigned to, the, to that register. So it's actually turning off All the other bits, but only turning on this bit, right? Okay, that's how that works. Just keep in mind, whenever you want to turn on a bit in the register, you need a left shift in Arduino. 
So by turning this bit on, uh, by looking at the data sheet over here, so it's actually, this one is on, right? You can look at this table. It's 0, 1, 0, 0, okay? Only this one is on. So it's uh, picking up the CTC mode of operation. So what is a CTC? It's a clear timer on compare match. Clear timer on compare match. So you give a number to it. Whenever the timer reaches that number, it's going to clear the timer. Okay. So this interrupt is based on a counter, a timer. Whenever the timer reaches that number, then clear the timer, um, trigger the triggers the interrupt. Okay, that's how that works. But in it has other types of interrupts. For example, it's not based on the timer. It's based on the different signal from outside, for uh, outside of the chip, which also makes sense, right? You are not based on a timer, but it's based on something happening in the world, like emergency signal or something, right? To trigger the interrupt. So I don't want to keep running this loop anymore because something very important happens. I have to do that one as a higher priority. Okay, so this one is to set up the CDC mode. What about this one? CS12. So setting <laughs> CS12 to one. Let's take a look at it. CS12 here to one. And also <laughs> it is setting CS10 to one at the same time. So both 12 and 10 are one. So what's happening here is one, 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 zero, one, right? <laughs> this is called Priscator, and we're going to look at the calculation uh, later. So just need to know that the Priscator right now is uh, 10, 12, uh, 10, 24. <clears throat> And that's a calculation uh, to find out uh, the frequency of the interrupt routine, how often you want to uh, trigger the interrupt. So this is 16 megahertz, which is a crystal oscillator on the board. And two is just a constant. N is the priscator. Um, and as we just set up over here is 1024. So no, n is 1024. And one is just constant. And this number is what uh, uh, the number you should assign in the program. So it, you plug in a number over here, and it's going to calculate uh, a frequency of the, you know, how often you want to tr trigger that interrupt the routine. So here's an example of it. So for example, I I use this number over here as this. So this is something you assign in your program. Okay, let's scroll up over here as you can see. OCR1A, I used this constant. Okay. Um, so this number is gonna give you a four second um, frequency for the interrupt routine. Let's see. If you plug in, I don't know why I put a one here, but I don't think that matters. Um, so if you do the calculation, and it is 0 0.125 hertz, so the period becomes eight seconds, okay? And the period, which is, show you, like this, this is one period, right? And this is totally a second. So for each one, it is four second here and four second here. Okay, and the interrupt is being triggered whenever that signal is being toggled. So which means if you have an a second period, okay, it's gonna be triggered. So the interrupt routine is gonna be triggered here and be triggered here as well. So you are having a four second 
um, time intervals for triggering the uh, interrupt routine service. How that works. So now you know how to do the calculation. You just need to plug in a number over here in order to calculate how often you want to trigger that interrupt routine. We can totally can control it by assigning a different number to this uh, parameter in the, in the equation. Okay, it's very simple program. You just need an ISR, and this is a flag of the interrupt. You just need an ISR something and the function, and uh, put all the sub function in the interrupt in the ISR function in, in your Arduino code. So the loop function is something on the top, right? And so here's the question. Should you put the ISR function inside the loop function or outside the loop function? I think it's inside, isn't it? You should put everything inside the loop function. I forgot. I mean, it's good to double check it. <laughs> I might be wrong. Forgot it's been so long. Anyway, well, so it's I can double check that really quick. Um, what I was thinking is the loop function keeps everything running back and forth, right? Should be outside, I guess. Yes. It's just an independent function called SR something and curly bracket. Right? Just like other functions. So if you call it from the loop function, it's actually still in the loop function. <laughs> right? If the loop function is everything it um no, no, you are not calling it from the loop function because it's an interrupt function. It only being called whenever the timer is up. So you are not calling the ISR. It's running behind the scene. It's just like the timer count, it keep counting, and when it reaches that number, it's going to directly run it. So it should be outside of the loop function. Um, yeah. Any other questions? regarding this tutorial. It's a lot of work. Hopefully you can get it done in a week. Did I? Okay, which is good. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is really it's a surprise. <laughs> right at midterm, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so the